welcome to the North York Moors on a really blustery and cold day in autumn. It's early November here. We're above the village of Danby. I'm going to do a mixed media painting today. I've got a wonderful piece of Moulin de Roy watercolour paper. It's uh, 300 grams, 140 pounds. I'm just quickly sketching out this amazing scene in front of me using graphite, hanging on to my board for dear life because it's a really blustery day. The wind's blowing against the easel. There is a danger of it all tipping over at any point, but it's nice to have a bit of jeopardy, I suppose, involved. So we're going to be using acrylic inks today combined with pastel. Just going to spray the paper first to get some water on the paper, if we can get it to spray on the paper, not against me. And I'm using a nice big thick two inch brush to get initially some cerulean blue inks into the sky using a piece of kitchen paper to blot away any excess and to actually make some interesting marks as well. Losing my inks every now and again, they're getting blown away in this wind, but we'll persevere. Using some nice rose madder now to get some reds into the scene. I want this to be part of the underpainting to work with the complementary greens of the landscape later on when it comes to the pastel stage. Again, just being quite intuitive about things, being nice and loose. The whole point about doing this underpainting for me is to be loose and energetic, really to sort of take that through into the pastel stage. I find sometimes if I'm just going straight to a, a pastel, I can be a little bit, a little bit uh, precious with the pastels. You can't afford to be like that when you're doing this sort of thing, particularly in this high wind. You've just got to let the inks do their thing, let the drips happen let the wind blow the ink over the paper. It all makes for an expressive painting. So I could do with some sandbags, I think, to keep this easel in place, but it's all part of the fun of plein air painting. Getting some nice uh, cadmium yellows and, and lemon yellows onto the foreground now, just to warm things up. I mean, the sun has been beautiful today and I want to get that sense of the light shining on the backward hills and to some extent on the, uh, the foreground tracks. So putting some purples now into the background, remember colour recession, we want the background colours to be blues and purples just to push everything back, softening it down. I'm using the pipette from the bottle of ink at the moment, so I'm drawing the ink directly onto the paper. The inks, of course, are very high key, very sort of colorful. And I like that, I like that um, expressive sort of color and, and mark making. We can always push it back soften things down both with water and also with pastels when we get to the, the pastel stage. Just blocking in the line of trees on the right hand side. Again in the, the foreground adding in the reds for the ferns that have gone over and are going to really be a feature of this painting. I often only spend about 15 minutes or so on this underpainting stage. It can be really, really quick. It's just a way of getting colour onto the paper, ready for the pastel stage. You don't need to take a long time over it. And in this high wind, it's going to dry almost instantly. I would recommend that you don't apply pastels until the underpainting has dried, but it can be done. It just means that the pastels will slip a little bit on the wet underpainting, but that can produce some interesting marks. I'm pretty pleased with that. The wind is blowing the, the clouds across the sky and we're getting 
hints of sunshine just every now and again. But of course the beauty with working this way is that I can quickly capture the scene in front of me. Any shafts of light that I see I can quickly get down with the inks and also with the pastel. So moving on to pastels now, the underpainting is pretty dry, as I say, with the wind, it doesn't take long for the paper to dry and the inks to dry. I'm looking now for pastels that have a synergy with the underpainting. I'm essentially a pastel artist, so I do apply quite a bit of pastel to the underpainting. You watercolour enthusiasts may well spend more time on the watercolour or ink stage. I mean, you apply the inks in the same way as you'd apply watercolour, and maybe only apply just a few marts of pastel. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is to find the combination of wet media with dry media. That's what produces a, a lovely tension in the painting. Always look to find other areas within the painting to use a pastel that, that you've picked up. It just gives the overall painting that sense of togetherness and synergy. And for that, I have a little box of pastels in front of me. Well, a little empty box that I'm putting the pastels that I'm using into so that I don't lose the pastels that I'm working with and can keep picking them up and using the same ones to provide that synergy. getting colder now. The sun seems to have been lost, but it's still coming out every now and again. I've got the essence of the scene when uh, the sun was out from earlier in the day with the underpainting, and I'm able to accentuate that with the pastels. Using the underpainting, the complementaries that I've produced with the reds, I'm putting greens and lemon yellows over the top, scumbling the pastels, so just Passing the pastel lightly over the underpainting, letting the underpainting show through. Being very loose with the mark making, keeping the expressiveness and the energy from the underpainting going with the pastels. Thinking about the direction of the marks, though remember the eye will always follow the direction of the pastel marks and you can use that to lead the eye through the painting. Just finding some brighter areas now in the foreground. What a wonderful day. Autumn in the North Yorkshire Moors. Can't beat it. My paintings are full of energetic mark making, but you do need to find sort of areas of peace within the painting so that the eye can rest on those and not be overcome by the energy and madness of the rest of the marks. Just beginning to work on the detail now in the trees, working the sky back into the branches, then the branches back over the sky. Remember never to just apply pastel side by side with each other, always work into the pastel and back into it again. So I apply a pastel mark with one colour, apply the other colour over that one and then back into it again and that's what creates the, the depth and blending. So I'm happy with uh, where I've got to today. I've been working on this for perhaps uh, a couple of hours. The light's beginning to change now, so I'm gonna take a couple of photographs and finish the painting off back in the studio. But it's been a great day, despite the wind and the cold. The scene's just amazing. I think it's going to turn out to be a, a really lovely painting, capturing the essence of autumn in the North Yorkshire Moors. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please like and of course uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next one.